Welcome everyone! In this video, we are in the Halloween Cup, showcasing some more fun battles featuring... Toxapex! Toxapex on team number one from my top five best teams for the Halloween Cup. Uh, and this is a, a Poison Double Dark Team Halloween Cup Edition with Toxapex on the lead. Toxapex about as bulky as it gets. Doesn't have the best move in Brine, but my goodness, does it make up for it in the bulk department. And also on team number one, we've got good old Sableye on the safe swap. Sableye reliably strong on the safe swap, even in these specialty cups like the Halloween cup. And uh, nothing really changes. Sableye just does what it does, and that is do heavy damage or grab shields. And also on this team, completing our Halloween Cup Poison Double Dark team for team number one. We've got Mandibuzz in the back, running Air Slash for the opposing Dark types. Mandibuzz adds some additional bulk in addition to Toxapex and is always very solid. But before we dive into the featured set of the video, we are starting things off with some bonus battles that I thought were tons of fun. And here we go, picking up a pretty neutral lead in the form of Golbat. So they usually uh, will go right for that big Shadow Ball, knowing that Toxapex is quite bulky and can tank the damage pretty well. And they do go just for that Shadow Ball right there. Gonna go for the Brine here, of course, and uh, just do some chip damage here. Doesn't hit very hard, but like I said, Toxapex makes up for it uh, in the bulk department for sure. So we get to another Brine here, and they are at Shadow Ball Energy. So we're gonna throw Mandibuzz in here to catch that, but no, they hang on to their energy. Very wise move by them, which allows them to debuff us with a Poison Fang before making a play into an Escavalier. Very interesting. We are hitting this Escav for neutral damage with our Air Slashes and going to go for the Foul Play. Foul Play is your primary move in neutral situations. Air Slash is simply there for coverage where Foul Play would be resisted and they one shot with the Mega Horn. That debuff really helped them out from the gold bat, allowing them the one shot, but we farm down with our Sableye, load up on energy, and oh my goodness, they've got an Obstagoon in the back, my goodness. Oh, this is getting tricky, so we have loaded energy. Gonna go for the return, and they shield the return on the Obstagoon, so... We've got to uh, get some shields down or get some chip damage on this Obstagoon here. So we will shield up the Night Slash to uh, hang in here a little longer. But they combo play us with the Golbat. Not going to shield this knowing how bulky we are. That's not going to cut it. Just the Poison Fang allows us to farm all the way down. We've got Gunk Shot for one battle. This was not calculated. I had built it and didn't realize it was Gunk Shot, but we go for it anyways, and we grab the final shield. Holy smokes. This is coming down to the wire, my friends. This Obstagoon is loaded. They are shielding everything, putting all their chips in this Obstagoon corner here. We definitely tank one Night Slash. Going to have a rough time tanking two, and I'm hoping like heck that they are running an attack weighted Obstagoon so that this return can either KO or get it within a get in range of two Shadow Claws and it KOs. Holy smokes. Sableye sends it packing. That's going to be a good game. Well played. Like I said at the beginning, Sableye doing what it does best. And uh, that is do heavy damage. And here we go. Toxapex mirror matchup. We go right into our Sableye and we draw out an Umbreon. So very interesting. Um, we are just going to go for the returns here on the Umbreon, of course. They definitely tank the returns. They don't shield their Umbreon because Umbreon, much like Toxapex, is about as tanky as it gets. But we definitely tank a foul play from Umbreon. Gonna let this go. And now, from here on out, we're gonna start shielding. As with team number one, the shielding priority absolutely goes to Sableye. Of course, when you have Toxapex and Mandibuzz on the same team, Sableye gets the shields. So we're gonna shield this to control the flow and alignment of this uh, matchup here. We don't know what else they have in the back. Uh, they led with Toxapex, so they got a bulky dark type in the back. 
Maybe they uh, caught our top five best teams video and is running a variation of this very team here. So we they come back in aggressively. So back in with that Toxapax onto our Sableye. And we're going to stay right here. This is what we wanted, guys. That's why we swapped in the Sableye to begin with. And we are just spamming these foul plays just as fast as we get to them. And they are going for the aggressive farm down. And Sableye. Holy smokes. Sableye. Put in the work. Nearly takes out the Umbreon and the Toxapex. That's insane. So we throw Toxapex in here to soak all this resisted damage. Uh, their farm down will not pay off for them because it's going to waste on our very own Toxapex here. We're going to farm it down. But no, they lock their Sableye in. So they are running a very similar team, but with Umbreon in the place of Mandibuzz. And you guys are about to find out why we chose Mandibuzz over Umbreon for this reason right here, guys, to handle the opposing dark types, like opposing Umbreons and Mandibuzzes that may be running Snarl, and even uh, your occasional Drapion that you may see. So, uh, Mandibuzz doesn't need shields to handle this Sableye. They did hit us with a big return, but we will absolutely make it to another foul play before they get to another return. Uh, Mandibuzz doesn't hit particularly hard, so this will not KO. It is neutral after all, but the damage has been done. The Sableye is hanging on by a thread. They have to go return here to take us out, and that is okay. Toxapex, I think, is in prime position to close this game strong. They throw the Umbreon in there, and now they cannot switch out to catch this Brine. Unfortunate for them, because we are saying bye-bye to the Sableye, and we are farming down the opposing Toxapex. Team number one coming in super clutch, taking it in the end. That's going to be a good game well played. Team number one for my top five best teams for the Halloween Cup did not disappoint. And here we go. Not the best lead in the world in the form of Sableye as with its ghost typing. It is resisting our fast move pressure, but we're going to hang in here a little bit. Put the pressure on this opposing Sableye and chip with a brine. They definitely let it go because they can tank it no problem. And they are well past uh, the back to the, the uh, foul play, excuse me. Um, and they go return. I don't think that's the way to go. You just go straight foul play in neutral situations. And they give us switch advantage. They safe swap into a... Wormadam trash, and we've got just the answers to Wormadam in the back on this team. Another reason why we've got these two Pokemon behind Toxapex for the occasional confusion user like Wormadam trash. And now the play here is to tank the Bug Buzz. It does hit us for neutral damage because our ghost typing negates what would be super effective. And we are going to go for the full aggressive farm down on this Wormadam. And we get it. Sableye is amazing. They make a play into a Mawile. So that's okay. Mawile not known for its bulk, especially in its shadow form. That resisted foul blade does quite a bit, and we get some lag here. Holy smokes, but rank one Sableye does not care about your lag. It's about as clutch as it gets as we go to another foul play despite the lag spike. And now we throw Toxapex in here. We are resisting this fast move pressure. We basically hard wall them all while, guys. And um, that is a thing of beauty. We will shield up the Iron Head and the aggro swap, locking their Sableye yet again. Our opponent uh, seems to love locking their Pokemon in on um, not so good matchups, but that is okay, guys. We do take that return, no problem, and this is just a foul play. Not going to cut it on our Mana Buzz, and we are absolutely not shielding this. And we're farming down, and all they have left is that poor little Mawile. Gonna go for another resisted foul play on the Mawile. They tank it, and uh, oh, they top left. I think they had just about enough. It was not trending in the right direction. That's gonna be a good game. Well played. Had a blast with those bonus battles as we move into the featured set of the video. We are met with the Core Breaker for team number one. My goodness, this is not something you see every day. It's a Shadow Tyranitar. So we're going to stay right here. Uh, I think Toxapex is the best answer on this team to a Tyranitar. 
And they shield our brine, of course, because in the Great League, it is quite squishy. Uh, definitely belongs in the Master League, maybe the Ultra League, but definitely the Master League. And uh, we do outpace uh, to these brines, which would hit for super effective damage. So at the very least, we are pressuring those shields. And now we have a shield advantage, and this thing is still too healthy. We have to go down uh, another shield to take this thing out. It's a nightmare for our two Pokemon in the back, but they aggro swap into a Beedrill, so we bank a move, and it is Mandibuzz time. And uh, we definitely dominate uh, Beedrill in all shielding scenarios. Not a problem at all. But the lag does not help, I will say. Uh, this is exactly what we want to see. Some lag in a very close battle. Uh, not sure where they are on energy. We definitely tank another X scissor. So we're just going to overload a little bit and throw just as they are getting to their final X scissor. Not going to let them hit us with another one. We're saying bye-bye to the Beedrill. And because of that over farm, we were just one air slash off from a foul play which will be more than enough to say bye-bye to the Tyranitar. And all they have left is an Alolan Marowak in its shadow form. Mandibuzz putting in the work. That was amazing. Going to throw Toxapex in here to force them to dump their energy. And now Sableye is primed to take over this game and bring it home for us. They can hit us with a Shadow Bone all they want. Rank 1 XL Sableye does not care about a Shadow Bone. We get to this foul play. And my goodness, Sableye coming in clutch, closing the game strong. We're saying bye-bye to the Alolan Marowak. Team number one was quite strong. That's going to be a good game. Well played. Sableye about as clutch as it gets. Does not matter what meta you are in. Sableye is amazing. And here we go. Umbreon lead. So we're going to stay right here. We do have our Mandibuzz if uh, necessary, but we do want to keep this thing away from our Sableye, of course. And they go for the Psychic! Holy smokes, they're running a Community Day Umbreon. Oh, was not expecting that. Was expecting a bait for sure. Going to go for the Sludge Wave. That's what we do on Umbreon and Mandibuzz, these very tanky Pokemon. They always let it go, relying heavily on their bulk, as they should. And they go for another Psychic. Holy smokes. Speaking of bulk, we are bulky as well, and they are not messing around. They're going to go for the foul play. We will shield this. We want to get some more damage off on this Umbreon here, and uh, we're going to go for the Sludge Wave here. Now, if they shield, uh, that's fine. Uh, it's good to even up the shielding scenario. What we're going to do is look to set up a catch on our Mandibuzz. Going to catch this resisted foul play here. They are trying like heck to take out our Toxapex, and um, that is fine. They come in with a Galarian Weezing, so that is why they were fighting so hard to take out our Poison-type Toxapex, and um, here we are playing out this mid-game matchup with the Galarian Weezing. You just go for the uh, Aerial Aces, of course, and this is why you want to run Air Slash in this meta. Because uh, there are occasional fairies and mostly for opposing dark types to do neutral damage. Going to go for an aerial ace here. And that just about takes out the Galarian Weezing. And now fully expecting a potential overheat. We did not fall for the bait, uh, that last one. And oh, it does not even KO. Mandibuzz is insane. Holy smokes. They take us out with a Toxapex of their own. And we've got a solid answer to it. But that Umbreon's pretty healthy, and we tried to catch the Brine. We really needed them to throw their Brine because Toxapex is quite bulky, although we are resisting this fast move pressure. We really needed them to throw that Brine so that we could catch it on our Mandibuzz, but they held off. They just kept on farming, and um, that's not a good thing for us because these Brines, although don't hit very hard, they do add up, and uh, that Umbreon is still left in the back, and this Toxapex is still too healthy, guys, and they do still have a shield. Going to go for another foul play, put the pressure on it, but they do not have to shield, and they throw the Umbreon in. I misjudged how healthy it was, guys, so we no-bubble this. We should have charged it a little more. 
I didn't think that it was as healthy as it was. Uh, we needed the additional farm, but it was an uphill battle. Either way, it was not trending in the right direction. Good game. Well played to our opponent. Always happy when the Halloween Cup comes around. Probably one of my favorite cups. And here we go. Umbreon lead yet again. And uh, some more lag yet again. My goodness. Not sure what was going on during these battles, but the lag was a bit crazy. Gonna go for the Sludge Wave here on the Umbreon, just as we did in the previous battle. They always let it go because they can. And they are at another potential Psychic and gonna let it go. And it is another Psychic. Holy smokes, these community Umbreons were all over the place. Uh, man, that's insane. I don't think that's the way to go, despite all of the poison types. I think you still need the coverage of Last Resort for opposing dark types, but here we are. Nidoqueen, Queen, we were a little slow on the swap. We definitely gave them an energy lead, and because we are down a shield, they don't have to bait, uh, and we're not gonna shield this uh, because we can definitely tank it. I'm gonna go for a foul play here. We not, we're not gonna build up to the return because we wanna get some guaranteed damage. If we go for the foul play, they will definitely let it go. And this is just a Poison Fang, but we are quite low, and I think it'll be just enough to KO, and it does. And that is okay. Going to wait the switch timer down a little bit, and look to come in with our Toxapex and farm up a little more and throw just before they get to their Poison Fang here. And uh, this Brine does hit for super effective, and of course we'll KO the Nido Queen from this range. And now we know that they have Umbreon, but no, they've got a Toxicroak as well in the back. Very interesting. That's the only uh, Toxicroak that I've seen thus far in this meta. And they shield up our Brine. That is beautiful. So what we're going to try and do is catch the Mud Bomb, but no, they just keep on farming with their nice shiny Toxicroak. Oh my goodness, that's okay. We tank a Sludge Bomb, no problem. We're going to let this go, but we are going to have to call a bait, guys. We're going to have to call a bait. Uh, going to go for this Aerial Ace first. They do shield, of course. That would be lights out for them. And now it's the moment of truth. Can we successfully call the bait? And we do. Holy smokes. Can you imagine throwing a mud bomb and having it go? No shielded by a flying type. My goodness. And now we're faced up against this Umbreon. We are getting quite low. We, but we are loaded up on energy because we did farm down that Toxicroak. And uh, we're just going to go for these aerial aces and try to catch a move on our Toxapex. Oh, my goodness. Making the plays. You'd love to see it. And Toxipo Toxapex is about as bulky as it gets. That does not KO, but we cannot quite make it to a move. But we did get some extra poison jabs in, and they are running Snarl, which means that they cannot farm us down before we get to this move, which allows us to say bye-bye to the Umbreon. Manda Buzz coming in clutch this time around, closing the game strong. That's going to be a good game. Well played. And a buzz coming in clutch, closing that one out for us. That was amazing. And here we go, Shadow Sharpedo. My goodness, uh, getting very spicy in the Halloween Cup. And it's running bite. That's even more spicy, my goodness. But this thing is, I think, it has to be the squishiest Pokemon in all of Pokemon Go Battle League, guys. I am not kidding. And, and they have to shield up resisted damage, my goodness. Look at these poison jabs, absolutely junking. And uh, it does run Poison Fang. We do not have to shield this, even though it does hit like a truck. That does laughable damage. And we have a shield advantage, and we win lead. That is amazing. ABB-style team, we swap out. Even when we win lead, for reasons like this, guys, they had a Charmer lurking in the back. Had to draw this out so that Mandibuzz doesn't have to see it. And oh my goodness, that resistant foul play did insane damage to this Shadow Grand Bull. And now we just farm this thing all the way down. And we have a move locked and loaded for this opposing Toxapex. We go Brine here because I was reading that they would try to go for the full aggressive farm down, and I knew that we would make it to another brine. Two brines will do more raw damage than one sludge wave, and we get to brine number two as anticipated, and they take us out with poison jabs, and now it's up to Mandibuzz, up a shield take out this opposing Toxapex here. Gonna let this go, and they go Sludge Wave right off the bat. They definitely uh, played that cor correctly. 
um, not going for the predictable bait. And now we're forced to shield the brines from here on out because the poison jabs with stab do add up. As bulky as we are, they do add up. So we are going to overload, max out our energy, and go for foul play number one. They let that go because they can. They are about as bulky as it gets. And now we need to get to back-to-back foul plays to close this game out. And we do have to shield up the brine. We are getting quite low. They will make it to another one. But guys, Mandibuzz, about as bulky as it gets. Even if you don't have ideal PvP IVs, we hang on and we've got the back-to-back. Going to go for foul play number two here. This will absolutely have to get the shield. And we've got foul play number three locked and loaded. That poison jab does not KO, which allows us to say bye-bye to the Toxapex. Mandibuzz coming on clutch yet again. Closing the game strong. That's going to be a good game. Well played. Team number one for my top five best teams for the Halloween Cup was amazing, guys. And here we go. Crustal lead. So we are, they are resisting our fast move pressure with their rock typing. But of course, we do have access to brine with stab, which absolutely does super effective damage to it. And they let it go. That is amazing. We kind of want to take this out. Uh, we have it here on the lead. We know that we have a Pokemon that is quite weak to it in the back and in, in the form of our Mandibus. So we shield up the Rock Slide and going to look to just take it out with a Brine here. We did get them quite low, so I wasn't expecting them to shield this, but they do. They want to get some damage off on us. And that is okay. We're going to tank this rock slide because we do survive it. No problem. And going to look to farm down and win lead with Toxapex. That is amazing. And they've got an Umbreon in the back. So we're going to let them take us out. But not before getting off this brine. I definitely think that we could have made it to a sludge wave. But that is okay. We've got a solid answer to this Umbreon in the form of our Mandibus. So we're just going to maintain alignment. They've got a Needle Queen in the back. So that means that it is Sableye time because with our ghost typing, we are resisting these poison jabs. Going to go for a foul play. We want to get that guaranteed damage. We're not looking to play the bait game with the Nitto Queen. And they almost always go Earth Power on Sableye. But we tank that. Rank 1 Sableye coming in clutch. And we're going to look to get off another foul play and put the pressure on this Nitto Queen. Question is, do they want to shield this low health Nato Queen? And they do. They want to debuff our Mandibuzz for the end game. And that's fine. We're completely fine with that. We will gladly take that shield advantage in the end game with this Umbreon here. And we do farm down with air slashes. And again, this is why you want to run Air Slash in this meta. Highly recommend it, guys. For reasons like this, when you're faced up against an opposing bulky uh, Dark type like Umbreon, you're doing neutral damage with your Air Slashes. And that combined with the Aerial Aces do add up. And they go foul play here. What the heck? Are they trying to bait us? We're not going to shield this Umbreon. And they go foul play again. Holy smokes, guys. You... <laughs> You know what that means. They're going straight foul play on our Mandibuzz. That means they're running Community Day Umbreon with Psychic. I say it time and time again on this channel, guys. Do not run Psychic Umbreon, guys. Uh, it is not worth it. Even in this meta with all the poison types, if you find yourself faced against an opposing dark type like Mandibuzz, even with a debuff, I might add you often find that you come up on the losing end, which is exactly what's going to happen to this poor Umbreon running the Psychic Community move. We say bye-bye to it, getting revenge for losing to that other Community Umbreon in that previous battle, and that is the team, my friends. Team number one for my top five best teams for the Halloween Cup was really putting in the work and racking up the wins left and right. It was amazing. Good game. Well played to our opponent. And uh, that is the team, my friends. Team number one, like I said at the beginning of the video, did not disappoint. It was quite strong. I was quite excited for it uh, when I was breaking it down in my top five best teams video for the Halloween Cup. I was quite excited for team number one because I saw the potential in it. It is quite powerful. 
You've got two amazingly bulky Pokemon to support Sableye, which means that you can prioritize your shield for the Sableye and just let it run free and wreak havoc on this Halloween Cup meta. It was amazing, and like I said again, it did not disappoint. But guys, I had a blast. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, I thank you for watching, and keep up the grind. Thank you, guys.